Things are off to a good start. Come here, buddy. Come here. Don't just meow at me. Come be bros. What is this? We're in Meow Mori. <laughs> meow Mori. I'm learning about puns. You know what makes this funky? Carpet. This is worse than carpet. Something happened to the carpet and they had to give it a jacket. What the fuck is this? I, bet you, did it, I wonder if it used to have a sheet in it and it doesn't have a sheet in it anymore and they just gave up on that. Kind of like it, kind of think it's a funny. I, I would put this on a door. We have come to Awamori, which is in the northern part of Japan. And we didn't want to start the video with just a hotel tour, but... I, I booked this place just <laughs> thinking, okay, we're going to go there for a night and we'll start the video immediately in the morning and we won't care about what happened the night before because it'll just be a nondescript place. <laughs> but the hotel is really strange. There's this word in Japanese, it's haikyo. It means like um, abandoned building or whatever, and it kind of feels like we're staying in an abandoned building. It's just really unmaintained and really disgusting everywhere. <laughs> um, the smell is like ammonia mixed with... Um, <laughs> Um, air fresheners basically everywhere. I've become immune to it, which means we've been in here for a couple of hours. When we entered our room, I have to explain this. So the guy told us, we came in, and he was like, this place is really cheap, so we don't give you any service. <laughs> which means, Please like, understand that. Which means, like, this is a dump. I'm preparing you for that. Yeah. And he takes us up to our room after a tour of the amenities, and we get into the room, and Eric's like, oh, this is good. And he goes, is it good? <laughs> like he was like, really? Are you sure? Really? It's really not good. I'm the dude um, that works here. Yeah, the dude. <laughs> so I'm um, just going to kind of try to fire through some of the things that I can think of off the top of my head. There's bugs everywhere, first off. And there is, it's, it's, it's a weird place because it feels like it used to be a really nice hotel. Yeah. Like it used, like, like 30 years ago, it was very nice. And that was the last time anybody cleaned it. Mm -hmm. Like, for reference, I didn't... There's urinals in the men's bathroom because it's, like, a pretty big, like, Ryokan-style hotel. And uh, this morning when I had to use the restroom, I went in the ladies' room because the smell of the urinals is so horrible that it, it, you can't be in the room. It's I'm, just I'm so nasty. I'm glad I gave nasty. you that, that idea because in the ladies' bathroom... Like, it was actually all right. Basically, we don't think women come here. My, my feeling about the experience I'm having is that I've come to a male prison. <laughs> Yeah. It feels very much like a male prison. And there's a lot of dudes here, a lot of foreigners, and I just imagine like they did some bad things in Japan and they've been ushered off into this area <laughs> and I'm here to report on it or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that is definitely how it feels. Um, my major thing that I had last night was... I realized that my spider phobia is still very strong. Okay. It is still is, very strong. Oh, is this strong. what happened with the shower? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I went in to, because they have like the room where you get undressed and then they have the shower room. And I went to go in and turn on the light and there was a spider like right in the doorway. It was like when we saw that lizard. So I just wanted to give you guys a tour of our new bungalow. Um, regular toilet, shower. Um, mm. The regular stuff, and then also this one foot lizard that I just took a pee with. He's bigger than a quarter and he's leggy as fuck, and I'm just like, okay. So I, I paced around like the ammonia filled hallway trying to figure out am I going to take a shower? Am I not going to take a shower? Like, I know I really need to take a shower. I won't have a happy day tomorrow. And uh, so I kind of just watched the spider go into the cubbies. And I was like, all right, I'm going to totally just avoid the cubbies. I can do that. So I walked really hard on the side of the room and I went into the, the shower room and that really felt prison-esque. Mm. That was so prison-esque. You talked about a shower curtain. There were no shower yeah, curtains Yeah, there were shower in curtains there. in the men's side. Um, there are no shower curtains on the I mean, they're all the moldy side. and gnarly, but they're there. Um, so had I been showering with someone, it would have been really, really weird. Um, and I like, mean, not, I mean, it's not super abnormal for that type of thing in Japan, but 
if there is a pool of hot water, then it's okay. But if there is not a pool of hot <laughs> water, we should not be naked showering together. Yeah, no onsen. Like there's, there's yeah, gotcha. Step one, have an onsen. Step two, everybody take a shower together. <laughs> step one was not fulfilled. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so, and then later we found out that the mirror that's in that bathroom is actually two-way glass. Yeah. So it's possible people could have seen me from outside. We're going to check when we go outside as to whether you can see into the female bathroom. But there's, I, just so you got a shower. I got a shower. But it was Spider might have watched. <laughs> from outside? Yeah. <laughs> His bros. <laughs> yeah. Uh, She's in here! Yeah, I mean, the place is weird. It's just really strange. That's that's I mostly was, the thing. It's more than dirty. Apple. I was eating my apple on the bed, and I was like, I shouldn't be doing this in here. <laughs> like, no one would bring a meal into this place. Yeah. And now I've had two meals here. Well, kind of. We had some, there's free breakfast. It's like toast and cornflakes. Yeah. But, yeah, it's a weird place. And there's all, like Katie said, there's all these foreigners staying here. And I was like, well, so why are you guys out here? And he was like, um, working? Just asked a random guy. Like, and, and he, was, he, he didn't really want to answer. It was weird. It was really strange. I don't know what the hell's going on out here. Well, we're way out in the woods, so this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But yeah. I'm excited to put this place in the rearview mirror and go do something more, uh, more or less Speaking scary. Speaking of rearview mirror, we already have a car. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and it's got rearview mirrors. Yeah, they're really high up, like really high up in the car. <laughs> Lots of mirrors. So I was sitting there taking my shower last night thinking to myself, yeah, this is one of those showers where somebody's definitely set up a camera. You don't have to. You can sit out in the parking lot and jerk off to girls in the shower. It's, I mean, you can see in there. there I can see sliver. myself. Like, look, I'm a little, I'm reflective. Like, you see that? It's a mirror. Yeah, but where it's shaded, where the wood actually creates shade, I can see the lamp inside. Especially if it was dark out here and it was yes, lit out there. Yes, and it was lit in there. It, and <laughs> it almost seems like that is to make ladies feel comfortable, like, oh, it's just a mirror. They got me. <laughs> yeah, and... It makes me wonder if somebody came out here and they just shifted the wood so that they could look in and nobody's ever looked at the wood ever again. So now that person gets to see the show every night. That's irritating. I'm gonna get in the car now. <laughs> you know, there's really no bugs in Tokyo. <laughs> there's a lot of bugs here. It's true. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that yet. Um, the car already has a name. This is the car. Um, and the name is, it's based on a phrase that I love. I love like when something happens, just going, who dat? <laughs> who dat? So this is Honda. Honda. Honda, because it's a Honda? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I, I really like that name. And I really like the car mainly for the interior, but I need to tell you that things smell weird in Aomori. This hotel smells weird. This car smells weird. The smell in the car is as if all of the windows were down, there was a heavy rainstorm, and now the car lives in perpetual funk. <laughs> um, it, it's really sad because the car is quite nice and new, so it seems as though somebody really fucked up a new car for them. And I'm wondering why they're giving the car to people when it smells like that. I'm just gonna deal with it because I was one of those kids that did that to my car, and <laughs> That's fine, um, but uh, it's got a special button What's on the, button the thing. I'm gonna push it. Oh, hey, that's nice. He told us that that side door was automatic. You thought I was listening? I was too busy going, who that? Who that? All right, let's get away from all these bugs. Man, I'm loving our Morty. Oh, I don't think he's into it. You can keep napping, my dude. <laughs> my bad.
one of the best things in the book. They always show the power spot. You gotta go to the power spot. Remember the first time I read it, I was like, power spot? And now I'm like, wow, power spot. <laughs> So we found out last night that we're kind of on the border between Aomori and Akita Prefecture. Like we bumped into Akita Prefecture last night and that border also goes through a large lake. And we're on a peninsula that goes into the lake and this power spot is right there. And as Eric already told me, this is a very good power spot. He already feels much more relaxed. Things are slowing down and uh, that is necessary for the start to your adventure. It's just really nice to be out in the woods. And the ground like, is squishy. The ground is squishy and it smells like the world rather than like, I mean, we live in Tokyo, so this is the flip side of that existence. And it's just like when we go on these trips and like it's on our first day and we happen to be in an environment like this, it hits me like really hard. Mm -hmm. Just like the freshness and the like refreshing feel and the power spot and all that. <laughs> I just get down on it, it's great. Well, this lake is cooler than I thought. These like little islands poking up out of the nowhere. How did that happen? And then you've got like this strip of clouds above the mountains in the distance. I guess they're just hills, but those hills, that's Akita Prefecture. We will not be going there. Oh, neat. Yeah. Um, so the line that divides the, the two prefectures is somewhere in the water there. Um, some fish are from Akita, other fish <laughs> are from Halmoni. And uh, yeah, it just looks much more picturesque than I thought. And I, you certainly could go swimming here. Um, Why don't you go put your toes in that water? <laughs> you put your toes in the water. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're gonna find out if this is swimming temperature. I'm gonna bet probably not. It's not that bad. It's kind. Of, it's kind of warm. Get your bathing suit, girl. We got this. I'm still working out my thoughts on this thing that has cropped up in my brain recently. It has to do with these statues of, that contain female nudity. I'm kind of bothered by them recently. I, f I don't know how to pinpoint it. I think there's multiple reasons why I don't think this should be happening. But on the flip side, they're beautiful. They're well done. Somebody crafted it. They, they made it happen. So I need to let you know that I know that that feat is impressive and I'm not trying to devalue it, but there's something about that it feels exposing as a female. It feels unfair in a way too, because male nudity is not something that is presented. Not in Japan anyway. So I don't, I don't know how to put my, my thoughts into words, but something lately has been bothering me about this. And I'm not a bleeding heart feminist by any means. Like that's, that's not me, but there's something about that that's starting to irk me. I don't know what it is. I noted this next adventure as a stream stroll, but as you can see behind me, it's a lot more powerful than a stream. So I'm upgrading it to chasing waterfalls. Like TLC? Like TLC. <laughs> we are straight TLC in right now. We have come to like a water park where you just walk along a gorge and there's supposed to be multiple waterfalls. And I'm kind of stunned at the first one that we hit. The second one we hit, not so stunning. <laughs> but that's two waterfalls and we found another one over there that we didn't even go and look at so that's three waterfalls now i'm gonna have fucking tlc stuck in my head all day number four it's tall <laughs> I really love coming out into nature in situations where I can go for a hike that isn't just a grind up a mountain. Not that that doesn't have its benefits, but this is really pleasant walking along a river and being out in the forest and it's not super hot because there's shade and Katie's about to trip down a step. <laughs> it just makes for a really nice experience. I like these nature strolls as opposed to like a mega hike. 
This is probably one of my favorite flowers that we've found in Japan. I've never seen it in America. It might be in other places in Asia. I kind of coined it the butterfly flower. In the middle you have all these little pods and they are going to bloom with kind of like little fuzzy antenna things and maybe some flowers if I remember correctly. So you have like this pod of flowers and then you have these extra flowers on the outside that look like butterflies. And I wonder if that's to attract butterflies to help this thing do its thing. This is really evolutionarily cool now that I think about that. I've never seen a plant create two types of flowers like this. It, You're a plant scientist. So. I am. <laughs> Bot botany is really my strong suit. <laughs> Walking along this path, being my size, being this much taller than the average person that lives in Japan, I gotta really be careful about catching spider webs and stuff in my face. And you can't really see them all the time, but every once in a while you come across a spider that is big enough that you notice it. Thankfully this one wasn't in the path, it was just off to the side, but it was still big enough that we stopped and noticed it. We were going to originally walk all the way to the end of this path that's down there, and it is 14 kilometers, which is a fairly significant distance to walk. And the thing that we read said that there's usually a bus that will pick you up and bring you back. But as we're walking down the, along the river, we're actually walking along the road as well, and I'm not seeing any buses. Yeah, <laughs> so we didn't see one bus in we the, didn't, however long we, we did The book says like you should go check the timetable of a bus stop that's like a little bit further down the road here and we were like ah it'll be fine because of Brit. course <laughs> you don't need to take the bathroom break or any of that mm. so we probably got i don't know five or six maybe seven kilometers or something down that path like i don't know if it was halfway but it felt it like it was halfway. halfway it was maybe three maybe um one fourth oh, okay so we had yeah. a long way to go and we realized there are no buses going by and uh so instead we turned around and came back to the car because if we got all the way to the end and then there were no buses and then we had to walk all the way back. That's a lot of walking for one day. Yeah, there's that whole day <laughs> shot. And um, I'm not comfortable like hitchhiking in these troubled times to get a ride back to our car. So it would have been a predicament. And we also had no data, so we couldn't use the internet to check in on anything. So we just made a safe call and walk back. But I mean, it kind of all kind of looks like nice and like it's pleasant and stuff. It wasn't, I don't think gonna get much like dramatically different. It was just a, you know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think we're gonna see more of the same cool stuff. Well, straight talk. Oh no. Uh, you there are thing. five uh, noteworthy um, waterfalls. Waterfalls, and we only saw one of them. Oh. Well, so we could drive we to are, them. We are gonna head up. There's <laughs> another parking spot, and we're just gonna take a peek at the uh, number one. Okay. But they might be numbered in the order that you see them, as opposed to the order of strikingness. <laughs> so we're we're gonna find out. We made one more stop off at a heavily populated area. It seems like the main attraction at this point is like just to look at a stream, like a picturesque part of the stream. I feel like we saw a lot of the stream earlier. Um, so we're basically gonna beeline for the next adventure, which I don't know is gonna be food or Jesus. We'll find out. There's a dish called badayaki, you're looking at it right now. It is basically um, uh, not pork, don't say pork, it's not pork, <laughs> beef, and onions. A little bit like gyudon, but done right in front of you. We're at a shop that is mimicking a yatai, which is like an outdoor eating situation, at kind of like a, a little booth that someone would have outside and uh, they used to make this dish back in the 1950s and this restaurant is mimicking a yatai from the 1950s and they're doing it pitch perfect to what they used to do there are several other places in this area that make badayaki but they don't make it like this so that's why we've come to this shop to have that 1950s yatai feel <laughs> Dude, it looks as, it, it tastes as good as it looks, like, there's, there's no way around that. I get the impression it's got like a similar thing to yudon, yeah. yudon like you said, like, is it like a mirin and shoyu based, like mm -hmm. mirin and soy sauce? It's a sauce? sweet kind of uh, savory thing, and um, the cut of the beef is way better, way better. Mm -hmm. um, 
very, very good. And then very sauteed and nice and I dropped an onion. <laughs> the yacht ties that Katie was talking about were apparently out front of a military installation back in the 1950s when this whole thing was concocted. And I can totally see how this kind of meal would be something that you could make for like a bunch of soldiers to get them like, a whole, you know, a bunch of calories in a very somewhat cheap and easy way to create it. And um, it's cheap. Even now, we paid 880 yen per person for a set. Comes with soup, rice, some vegetables, and things like that. So even now, it's like pretty cheap. So if you're making this like at scale for an army, it's probably something that you could get created pretty simply because you could make it in big platters and put it on these big plates, and then everybody can see it right off the plate. Like I can see it very meshing into that culture really, really smoothly. Um, Katie said she really liked the meat though. I kind of have to say it's a little bit fattier than what I would like. Um, maybe I'm used to gyudon being a thinner slice, but it's a little chewier than what I personally would go for. But I really think the sauce is flavored really well. It's a subtle flavor, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm on board. If this place was nearby, I would definitely like bring people. Like if my friends visited, I'd be like, we gotta go to this place, it's cool. You sit down, you put a bunch of meat on a plate and light it on fire underneath, it's a cool experience. Oh, I don't know if I would go as far as say it's like, it's divine dining, but I'm happy we're here. a little bit nerve-wracking by the heel there. It's spiky. Remember when Katie said we were doing some Jesus? We're doing some Jesus, y'all. This is the tomb of Jesus. <laughs> It's hard to even say with a straight face. <laughs> I was gonna try and play this real straight, but it's really hard to do. Uh, so yeah, this is like they, this the people in this town have got this this mound, and they say that this is where Jesus was buried. I'm gonna try to recount the story as well as I can off the top of my head, and then kind of explain what is actually happening here. So the lore goes that when Jesus was 21, he came from Judea and he came to Japan and he was enlightened or whatever verb you want to use and learned about the things that he needed to learn about. And then he returned to Judea and he gave the gospel and explained everything to everybody. And of course, things didn't go so positively during, during that process for him. People weren't so happy with him. And then instead of being crucified, his brother was crucified, and we'll come over here. This is a tomb for his brother's hair. His brother is not here. And his brother was crucified in his place. And Jesus escaped through Siberia and came back to Japan and became a rice farmer and died at 106 years old. I think 106, I think they had yep, that right. that is correct. And then they put him in a grave here and that is where he is. Um, so of course that's like a pretty wild story, right? Like everybody's gonna be like, well, that doesn't seem right. Because we personally have been where they apparently in Jerusalem in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is like the main place people think Jesus' tomb is. We've been there and that was a totally different experience. There goes Katie, she's going in there to co-chill with the man. Just watching all the people with the fire over here like almost light each other up. This is just insanity. Like you see, the, look at look what's going on here. Look at this. You see the lady cowering underneath the lady with the giant set of fire. She's literally climbing over her this other lady. Like literally climbed over her to stuff it up in that thing. And then there are of course other places that people say he is, but this is I think maybe one of the most far-flung locations that they have uh, purportedly, support, so, support, uh, supposedly buried Jesus. 
Um, so the, the, the story to why this has happened goes back to 1936, oddly enough, and they were going to be doing a um, restructuring around the lake that we were at earlier, and it was going to be turning into a um, national, park. national park. Thank you. And the people in this area wanted to figure out a way to incorporate kind of that world into it. And through this process, they found some scriptures and stuff that were written in Japanese that were very obviously not true. But um, they, <laughs> they interpreted them as real. And this was part of the story that somehow came up out of that system of paperwork and stories that they had found. Um, and they kind of adopted it. And this is now a thing. People don't really believe this is true. Most of the locals apparently don't think this is actually a thing. Um, but they do have a Matsuri, a festival here every year, and a Shinto priest comes up and does some of some things. And he says that, you know, Shintoism has a lot of gods and stuff, so this isn't contradictory to him. And he's just, you know, if he was buried here, then great. And if not, then, you know, it's not hurting anything. So they have little festivals. It's a thing that happens. And uh, there's this lore that out here in the middle of nowhere, because we are out in the middle of nowhere, Jesus has been buried. <laughs> I just want to read one sentence from this blurb here, and it says, His younger brother, Isukiri, casually took Christ's place and ended his life on the cross. Let's step back to casually. What? Some sort of nonchalant crucifixion? What is that? <laughs> Who did this? Because I know people are going to be curious about this, I was going to talk just like very briefly about what I do know, which is almost nothing, about the state of Christianity in Japan. Because this is a very oddity, and I think that even though there are Christians in Japan, they are a very small minority. Um, there is a history of Christianity in Japan to a certain degree, but it never took hold the way it did in other places, especially like if you compare it to Korea or something that's like a region regionally the same. Like, but like down in Nagasaki and stuff, they had like Christian like influence and there's islands churches. that we went to with lots of churches and stuff. So this concept does definitely exist. And we have known people who have been part of the Christian community and stuff in Japan, but this is not representative of that at all. This is kind of, I don't want to use the word cult because I think that's kind of a rude, nasty word to use, but it's more of like a roadside tourist attraction, I think. Like that that's more of yeah. kind of what this is. It's not like there is a large people who actually believe that Christ was actually buried <laughs> on a hill in this little village in northern like Japan. Like <laughs> it's not like it's not representative of like the standard Christian that you would meet and who lives inside of Japan, I guess, is all I wanted to clear yeah. up. I didn't want to give, like, a weird impression. This is more of an oddity. You can't go up to somebody that's a Christian anywhere in the world or in Japan and go, hey, what about that burial plot over there in Shingo City? Yeah. Like, they're going to be like, what? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Japanese people would probably be aware of it, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just didn't want to, like, I don't know. I was worried about giving off this impression that this is, like, a thing that everybody here actually thinks is, like, a thing. And, and if, believes, yeah. And if people do believe it, then I'm misinformed. And I, the most I know is what I, you know, I did 10 minutes of internet research before we got up here. But mostly it's been written about is this, like, yeah, this is a thing that kind of somebody tried to make almost as a tourist attraction, but kind of through confusion. Like, it wasn't really clear what the purpose mm. of it all was and everything. But, yeah. Um, however... Once I was right when I was done filming, a whole group of people came up onto the hill and they were, interestingly enough, none of them were wearing masks, which is kind of peculiar. And they were all dressed in what I would call religious style clothing, but not like Western religious style clothing, like Japanese religious style clothing. And they had like these golden things like around their necks and stuff. And they kind of felt like a group of religious people. And they were up there and it appeared from a distance that they were praying at one point. And they were all putting money into like the little box because it's Japan and that's how you give money, you give money to the gods or whatever, right? Um, so maybe there are sects of people or something that are like into this, or maybe they're just people that are out for a visit. And it's just a, as a tourist yeah. thing. I, we didn't, we didn't, I'm not gonna get up in these people's business. Like, <laughs> you Why know what I mean? Yeah, what's going on that? here? I, yeah, but I did find it a little odd that in Japan, a large group of people weren't wearing masks. So it makes me question a little bit, like, are they on the outside of society? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just got this weird feeling about it. But anyway, that's Making our trip. Feel weird. That's our trip to, <laughs> we're not a large group. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> You're you in my family unit. 
Put your mask <laughs> on. <laughs> but anyway, that's our visit to uh, Jesus's Japanese tomb. Jesus's Japanese tomb. Mm. Mm. It's got a, it's got a, it's got a good it's ring. Got a ring. It's got a bit of sparkle. Yeah. We're just riding in the car. We had about a two-hour ride that we're on to get to some tasty stuff for Fika and uh, we so did we like we noticed the dam to the side here and then we noticed something very strange and Eric will back up now and show you it's a photo frame for the dam <laughs> is that a goddamn I think so Speaking of Christianity, <laughs> we have come to a town called Hirosaki. I think I did that right. And this town is kind of famous for interesting architecture, buildings that look different than how they normally look in Japan. And this church is one of the buildings that looks a little bit different. And like I was saying earlier, there is like normal Christianity in, Jap in Japan. And this is probably a more normal church than the Jesus tomb that is down the road <laughs> but uh yeah this is a different looking building uh it's cool to see things that don't just look copy and paste because a lot of japan does just look copy and paste so to see like uh, something that's a little bit different is striking and this is a bit striking um other news uh the reason that we actually came to the town was to have a fika apple pie and we have gone to three different places and all the apple pies are sold out <laughs> so uh, i guess that's kind of an afternoon thing and it's like it's afternoon, but it's a little too afternoon. It's like almost six o'clock now, so um, all the, there's no more apple pies left for us. So now we're gonna scramble and see if we can find something else. On our colonial tour, we have now hit the bank, and this certainly does look like a bank. But I was under the impression you could go into these buildings. Not right now, I know we're after like 5 p.m., so I didn't think we'd be able to go in, but the sign in front of this says until 4.30, they have like open hours. But that front door isn't looking very inviting. Like anybody's gone in there in a few days or weeks or months. So maybe it's COVID closed or they just aren't doing banking anymore. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> what happened? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I got stuck. So this is the colonial question mark. I don't know what this building is. We might find out along the way, but we found some really cool stuff that's also happening in this area. Welcome to miniatures. What? Why do women What's like miniatures? <laughs> it's like a chick thing, It's right? not a women thing. <laughs> Everybody loves miniatures. Oops. I'm as big as this building. <laughs> okay, fair enough. It's pretty cool. Are you a woman? <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling like it, yeah. Wow. What are they doing? <laughs> but, but you think like it's just those two? No, there's a whole village over here. Where's your favorite, man? Um, I gotta meet them all first. Look at that radio tower. That's the city hall, isn't it? What is oh, this? Oh wait, maybe not? I don't know. I don't know if they're replicas of things that are in the city still. I wonder if they're replicas of things that didn't last. So maybe back in the day, could probably read some plaques. So what do you think this is then? They're gonna tear something down. <laughs> something that and didn't they last? they put, put homage to it. But I mean like some of them are breaking. So I wonder if that one just, they needed to do something. Uh, I have an interesting thing to point out. They light up. Oh yeah, there's electricity. Or they did it one time. They, yeah, maybe. This is some creepy stuff. Is it like, creepy? Look at, no, 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 this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Like the light on upstairs? Oh, oh yeah, there is a light on upstairs. <laughs> if I saw someone move in there, I'd be like, oh, we gotta leave. <laughs> what would you do if you saw somebody move in one of these little ones? There's a small fire here. I, I think feel, this I is feel like I can see the newspaper about this time. Did we stay here last night? Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> it's pretty cool this though. Is, yeah, this is really cool. Oh, there's the church that we were at. Holy crap, Eric Klein. Katie, Katie, this is your Godzilla moment. <laughs> <laughs> 
if you told me I was allowed to tear this shit down, you have no idea. I'd be really happy and kind of sad at the same time. Like I shouldn't be, I, w I think I could only do it if they would auto propagate back. Like if we lived in some sort of virtual reality where you can physically really destroy things, but yet it doesn't matter because you just go like that and everything's okay. Do you remember that video game Rampage? No. Somebody should, you don't remember you were like a dinosaur or a gorilla or something else and you just climb buildings and beat them? It was like in the 80s. You don't know Rampage? Oh, we're gonna play Rampage on Twitch. Yeah, um, okay. yeah I don't know that one, but uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is fun. I was here. Mm. There's a bell. Not allowed to touch. I have to say I made it better. So it's that touching is allowed. Touching that makes it worse, not allowed. Touching that makes it better, okay. We have discovered a little bit of information here. Uh, there's a map on this side of the entrance of the miniatures area. There wasn't one or we skipped it somehow on the other side, but uh, this gives us a little bit better idea. Uh, each one of these buildings is representative of a building that at one point did exist in this town. Um, there are a couple different colors here. There's a dark purple and a light purple. And the dark purple indicates buildings that still exist. And the light purple represents buildings that do not exist anymore. And I'll take a quick count here and I see one, two, three, four, five dark purple. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine light purple. So there are five remaining buildings that are represented over here that still you can walk up and see. And there are nine that are gone. And it seems like they're all sort of in the city center. A couple of them look like they'd be a little bit of a walk from here, but still walkable. Uh, so I guess back in the day, most of these buildings were built around the Meiji era. And it said that there was a specific architect that was involved with the construction of a whole lot of them. And they were made in a Western style with like a Japanese Meiji twist to it. And uh, that basically means that there's some like Japanese styling that went into it and it was built with Western um, manufacturing methods as far as like materials and how the buildings are built. And it makes them usually last longer than like a traditional Japanese building would be from back in the day then. So when the Meiji restoration was taking place, they were sort of modernizing and Westernizing to a certain degree. So this was probably all a part of that. And I have a theory, and I'm just gonna pop this off the top of my head. I have a theory that I wonder if part of the reason that this stopped happening was because of World War II. And there was kind of like an anti-Western motion in the, uh, in the Japanese consciousness during World War II for reasons you might be able to think of. And um, that might've been what kind of put the kibosh on this type of construction or whatever. But it certainly is cool to come and see it and see a town that is, like I said before, not just a cookie cutter copy paste situation. Pretty much saved the best for last. This one looks like it's been kept up. It looks quite clean and polished and shiny. It is the library. I kind of wish that we could go into these buildings, but they're amazing from the outside. So leaving them for the afternoon when you can't go in wasn't a bad idea. They're, you can totally still appreciate them just looking at them. We've come over to this little area that is like literally a block away from all those older buildings and the little miniatures that we were at. And uh, because there's this ramen shop down here and we're like, okay, that ramen has some really good reviews. We're gonna hit it up, but it's closed because today is actually Umi no hi. It's a uh, sea day, a marine day or something like that. So it's kind of a holiday. Things can be spotty and they're open and closed. But then we noticed that there was this place with the nice cock <laughs> and we were like okay well let's go look at that and like there's all this weird music playing and the menu is kind of like chaotic and strange looking so i think we're just gonna go in there randomly and see what happens with food and i sort of expect it to be kind of weird <laughs> so let's see <laughs> When I said I thought things were going to be strange, my spidey senses are straight on because it's a little strange in here, but not strange in a bad way, strange in an amazing way. Um, you probably see around me, it's a pretty big room. We're in the middle of it, so behind Katie is the same amount of space. There's some people back there playing video games, they're playing Street Fighter, and there's like manga everywhere, and the way it's decorated is very, like, it, is a lot of, it feels a little bit like, um, a little bit otaku, <laughs> really like uh, anime stuff and video games and that kind of thing, but in a fun way, not in like a weird way. It's like, I don't know, the vibe in here is chill. 
and um, they have this menu on the table that is explaining different sets you can do and he explained it to us and I was like wait really because he was like we do a tabe hodai which is like an all you can eat and it is 500 yen <laughs> which is ridiculous Boy, and it is an is astonishing ridiculous. amount of food it is an astonishing amount of food like so everything on this table right here was 600 or uh, uh, 1100 yen because i paid an extra 100 yen to have alcohol so you get a drink a curry rice a little soup with meat in it a salad and fried chicken karage for 500 yen and then six i mean added 100 yen for <laughs> for Ringo Shu because we're in Aomori and this, uh, apples are famous here. And uh, you order by squeezing this little, uh, <laughs> this thing, it's like a squeaky toy. <laughs> so, like, it gets their attention, which is genius. And um, yeah, okay, so we've got a lot of food here. And he went over and got this for us and brought it over, which Katie was saying that she wishes she could have controlled the volume of food that came out because it's a lot. But um, we hit the curry rice. Uh, it's very flavorful. It's not gourmet curry rice, but it's got a lot of flavor going on. It kind of tastes like a, like a, one of those, like the the retro packs. I don't know what they're called. The, you know, you boil them in water curry pack things. It tastes like one of those, but like the, the premium one. And uh, he's got some hot dogs up in there. Wieners, I'm sorry. I mean, it tastes like a hot dog. Um, I don't, there's so much to eat. Let me try some of this so this is like basically a whole bunch of different vegetables and meat in a broth and it's kind of a soupy thing but kind of almost like a curry as well but if this is like really similar to something that when Japanese people would have grown up eating like their grandma and their mom would have made something like this it's very similar to that it's good I mean when, when, the, when the price is so low the bar doesn't have to be very high and it's definitely not bad it's good food this is like I can see this being very nostalgic for people and it sort of like really nails um, the type of decorations you see is the type of people that would come in and probably want to have something like this it's really really well done and uh, I guess I'll give this a try too like I said, this is um, al alcohol made with apples, and it's going to be sweet. It is not watery at all. It's very apple -y flavored. It's really good. I, 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 we are baffled at how cheap this is <laughs> for the quality and quantity. <laughs> Nothing has been sacrificed. Are there drugs in there? Are, are, they, are we getting fleeced? We might be. Are we? Yeah, I don't know. Are we, is there a roofie hiding? Is that what's gonna happen here? Am I gonna wake up tomorrow with no credit card? <laughs> you know what I mean with this guy? I don't know. You know. Oops. Oh, someone's like, someone's like. I mean, it's cricket. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's time to eat and probably eat too much food. What about that karage? I'm gonna let you try the karage. You you want the yeah, karage, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is what it came for. Nice crunch. Excellent flavor. The breading is seasoned really, really well. How is this? How does it? Is this real? If we lived near this, this would be a. This would be like, you'd come here all the time. Like it's so cheap. I would live here. <laughs> that karage is great. Everything I've tasted so far, and I had some of the curry, and I had some of the soup. They've been very good. Like. Nothing to go, oh yeah, that makes sense, you're paying 500 yen. Like when you go to CC's Pizza, you know you know why you're yeah. paying shitty amount of money for that. But What do you think this should cost? What would be the number that you would have and be like, yeah, that makes sense? This is a meal. That's a meal. This could be a meal if we're, rice was with it. I, I could say like somebody could charge 1500 for this amount. Easily. Even even more. Yeah, um, agreed. And that doesn't even mention that it's Tabehodai. <laughs> I'm, I am lost. And they topped it with a tomato. This is decadent. This is like gluttonously decadent. Guys, I eat an apple every night. I like apples. I might even say I love apples. I was psyched when I found out that Almori Ken was an apple hub. I was like, wow, we are going to do this. I earlier today one of the options was to go apple picking but we were gonna get there too late so I was like all right apple pie let's do that went to two shops sold out 
went to another shop doesn't exist anymore. I've now come to this grocery store. There's no apples in there. There are no apples in the grocery store. What sort of like episode of insanity is this? <laughs> I feel like somebody knows that I'm here and they're just playing a cruel joke on me. That's some Charlie Brown music right here. back to Aomori Sea. Why didn't they do that right? How are we back here? I am back. Oh. <laughs> we we have arrived in Aomori Shi. Oh. And uh, this is my second visit. I came here when I was hitchhiking years ago. I guess that was in 2017 17 or so. And uh, when I came up here, it was for something called the Nabuto Matsuri. And it's a huge festival where they had these gigantic floats that they'd pull up and down the road. And it was like super chaotic. And I saw a girl get finger banged. It was a whole thing. Mm. Uh, this video is about that if you have that missed it. That girl wasn't me. <laughs> wasn't she wasn't there. even here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you're interested about that, look up my Hitchhiking to, Hitch, Hitchhiking to Hokkaido series. That's on our YouTube channel, blah, blah, blah. It's a big long thing as a whole like different experience for our videos. But anyways, um, I am now back to Aomori for the first time. that I've been back. So my second visit, I'm tired, and you're that here. That is notable. You are here for your first visit. Yeah. Back for your first time, never before having been here, and um, that's one visit and two for me, so three total. And <laughs> when we walked into our hotel, they had the floats for like, the festival like... that I came to up on the wall, but like small versions. They're still. <laughs> awesome looking in the hotel. You walk in and it's, it's badass. Mm. But um, they're very small compared to what you see in real life when they have that festival. And uh, that's I it. I want to talk about the oddity that was our check-in situation. Okay, so, hold on. My arm is tired, so this is what's going to happen. Okay, you're on the spot now. Okay, so th th we walked in and the guy uh, asked us for our IDs and we gave them to him and he said, oh, you're from Tokyo. And we were like, yeah. And he was like... You booked this online. You yes, forgot to mention I, I booked it online. And uh, he said, the thing that you booked is only for people from Aomori. You have to prove that you live here. And we were like, oh, and I said, if we were from Aomori, would we need a hotel? <laughs> Sometimes you got to get a hotel. Um, so I was like, okay, well, can you tell us how much a, a room would be? And he starts crunching some numbers and we're both sitting there like we're in Nimon territory, like 200 bucks. Like this is going to be terrible. We were you, expecting you... to pay six, uh, 67 bucks. And uh, he turns the calculator around and it says 60 bucks. And we're like, but it's cheaper now. So they're just fucking all the people from Aomori. <laughs> So that's what I was thinking while that was going on. And that's fine. We got the same room I expected to get for less money. I'm I'm okay with that. Um, tiny little room. Uh, this is the expanse. <laughs> you know, I'm in the gang con, y'all. This is the whole room. I can tell you right now, I'm pretty psyched to have a private shower. Since people probably watched me shower last night. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just a step up. I'm about to set up that GoPro. She thinks she'd be alone, but she's not. <laughs> Fish don't know about our boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> Just having a thought. This is the end card for the first part of Aomori, mm. which is pretty quick. Like we went on that trip not a million years ago and I'm already editing it. Yeah, that is very <laughs> so, quick. So I finished the edit up, but I did want to address something in a video that as of the time that we're shooting this right now went live like sometime last night, right? 
I'm oh, getting a lot of comments from people, and it's a video where we were going to the pleasure forest, mm. and you were dangling off of the ropes. Yeah, great memories. <laughs> so, a lot of people are like, Eric, why didn't you put the camera down and help her? But I wanted to point out in my defense, I wasn't wearing any of the safety harnessing stuff that you needed to have, and I was on the other side of the barrier. Like I couldn't, I couldn't have just run across there and done it. It would have been really dangerous. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I feel like I can explain even better. I had asked Eric to basically end his day. So he went all the way down to the bottom, took off all of the harness equipment, and he came back up into a platform that's in the middle of the arena. Hmm. There's a whole bunch of equipment around this platform, but people can it's come like and platform. climb this viewing platform without having paid to the get stairs. In. Yeah, it's, it's just a place to go and like really be immersed in this weird thing that they've built and to get a view of the mountain. So Eric has climbed back up to that viewing platform and he's on the other side of a fence. Like he can't, he's not not supposed to come in. He probably could. <laughs> I could but he's have, not but it would have been really dangerous in. to run across exactly. that without safety equipment. Yeah. So without any safety equipment, he shouldn't be coming into that area. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so... Just that in is, my defense, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, when I asked him, what am I supposed to do? I knew that it was something that had to happen on this side of the fence. <laughs> and um, I told the people, like the Japanese people that were on that side of the thing with her, I was like, can you help her? And they like oh, immediately went, oh gosh, there's something happening and you yeah. can't do a thing. And they ran over and helped her. Yeah, so. they, they, well, everybody they was do. just kind of watching. Like I was going to solve the problem. Yeah, yeah. And there was no way that I was going to solve <laughs> that problem. So anyway, that's a, that's a, to address that situation um, because I was just nervous that uh, I Everybody was coming off kind of crazy. Leave me to dangle to die. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, let's just keep recording. Anyway, so the Alamoni, first Alamoni video is finished. And uh, just this is a reminder to hit the like button and the comments if you have comments down below. And if you don't have comments, say something anyways to trick the robots. Mm -hmm. And then follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And we did um, a good job this time. Whoa, ins whoa, hold on, it's Instagram, Twitter, soon. Facebook, uh, and Discord, Twitch. Discord. And oh yeah, Twitch. If and you then... want to really get involved, head over to Patreon because that's where we do the best of our business. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that, the way we can keep making these videos with our small following. It's over on Patreon. So if you want to help us keep making the videos, that's the absolute best way to do it. But hitting the like button and the bells and the comments, all that stuff helps too. And I think that ties everything up. I don't think I have anything else to say. Yeah, you're not a bad person. I'm not. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, check out this bee footage we got going on. Enjoy that.